Good night, everybody. Welcome back. Today, I am so happy to meet you again in one of, uh, of amazing uh, cases in ICU. I uh, believe you will enjoy a lot with this amazing cause of Disney in ICU. Uh, let us see for this uh, real case study. A 16 years old female patient known case of sickle cell disease admitted to female medical ward because of vasoocclusive painful crisis, dropping hemoglobin and acute chest syndrome. Diagnostic workup revealed sequestration crisis. Hematology team diagnosed sequestration crisis by homogeneous enlarged spleen compared to the previous size plus dropping hemoglobin. There was interstitial infiltrate of post lung basis. This is a spleen. Homogeneous enlargement reaching 20 cm compared to the previous measure with dropping hemoglobin and patient was dysnic with lung infiltrate, B lines, dirty pleura, subpleural consolidation denoting inflammatory process which is acute chest syndrome. Patient was treated according to the protocol for acute chest syndrome and sequestration crisis with two, two units of simple blood transfusion, followed by two units of exchange, IV fluids, antibiotics, oxygen, and the incentive spirometer. Patient improved on conservative medical management. Two days later, we, cons we was consulted again because the patient looks ill, febrile, with abdominal pain, tachypneic, respiratory rate reaching 50 per minute, with rapid shallow breathing, and the increased oxygen requirement reaching to 10 liter non breathing mask. Chemistry was stable, apart from increasing LDH, reached to 2,500. CBC was stable. Patient was hemodynamically okay, and she was fully conscious. So, acute chest syndrome, sequestration crisis, treated properly by medical uh, conservative treatment, improved, two days later, deteriorated again. This is really unusual to see with the sickler patient. Usually after exchange and conservative treatment, if improved, it will go for re recovery. But after two days, to deteriorate it again, rapid shadow breathing, hypoxia, tachypnea, there is something unusual to see in this type of patient. We, thanks to our protocol for dyspnea by critical care ultrasound, we should apply this protocol in this unusual dyspnea in this patient. First, in fear vena cava. Usually, you will find the protocol in details. I will give you the link after the end of the lectures. But for this patient, there was, first we'll go to inferior vena cava. If we see the inferior vena cava, it's narrow, collapsing on the narrow sides. We usually think about infective causes of hypoxia and dyspnea, which is pneumonia and ARDS. So usually, after seeing this type of inferior vena cava, usually we go to the lung to search for any infiltrate. But in this patient, even the infiltrate was present at the beginning, vanish. Now A lines all over. Really, it was A lines all over. No signs of lung infiltrate and no pleural effusion. Usually, this is unusual for the patient with narrow. Uh, collapsing fear vena cava, the lung usually gives a clue, but now we have normal lung and we have narrow collapsing in fear vena cava. In this patient, we shift to, as a third stage, we go to the heart to look for any subtle causes of the cardiac, subtle cardiac causes for uh, her dyspnea. For chamber view, wheel contracting the heart, not dilated right side, Good contraction, no almost abnormality. Valve opening wheel, nothing in the forward chamber view. Let us see short axis parasternal view. <clears throat> wheel contracting heart, no almost abnormality, no dilated right side, no pericardial effusion, nothing explaining this hypoxia. Look for this modified parasternal long, long axis parasternal view. Good contraction of zero wall. Septum, opening valves, will, no pericardial effusion, nothing to explain this near. There is 
Another explanation for this patient, patient develops sequestration crisis and the giving simple, two units simple transfusion, usually with recovery of the sequestration crisis, the blood will come back to, will go back to the circulation and she may get in trouble by pulmonary congestion. So, I, in this patient, I checked for the wedge pressure, which is the surrogate of wedge pressure by critical care ultrasound is First, measure E wave, which is the diastolic feeling of the mitral valve here. E wave, by putting the sample volume of the pulsed wave in the teeth of the mitral valve, it is 120 centimeter per second. And you will measure E prime, which is the tissue doubler of the annular, annual, mitral valve annulus here, septal, septal uh, side. You will see the movement of the annulus of the mitral valve here by tissue valve in the E prime, which is the diastolic movement of the mitral valve annulus, this is the E prime, and E, which is 120 over E prime, which is here 13, this is a surrogate of uh, wedge pressure and will identify if there is any pulmonary congestion in this patient is less than 10. That means the wedge pressure is less than 10. The patient is not in pulmonary congestion as, uh, as a cause of this distance and this situation. There is an important point for you. There is a gift for you now. I will give you a gift. If your machine don't, if you if in your machine you don't have a tissue doubler, you can make a tissue doubler a simulator of the tissue doubler or surrogate of tissue doubler by managing your machine by management the adjustment of your machine as i did here by putting the sample volume of pulsed wave doubler here in the annulus of the mitral valve and please decrease the scale of your spectral doubler decrease the scale of your spectral doubler to 20 centimeter per second to manage the movement of the tissue which is usually too much low compared to the blood movement, blood velocity, and based on the colorization of the B-mood, make B-mood color. By doing this two adjustment in your machine, decreasing the spectral wave doubler to the lowest value in your machine, usually 20 centimeters per second, I, and by making B colorization, B color mood, you will get this amazing picture, which is the study of the tissue doubler of the mitral annulus. As you see here, this is the S prime, denoting very good contracting left ventricle, and this is the E prime, and this is the A prime, as you see here, very clear. This is a gift for you. Try it, it works and it will give you a tissue doubler if you don't have the software. Back to our patient, wedge pressure is okay. Our patient is not congested. Amazing. Fitting the bottle together, our patient is dyspneic, tachypneic, with rapid shallow breathing and hypoxic, but heart is good, lung is good, without infiltrate or pleural effusion. What is next, thanks to our protocol, in our protocol, which is not in blue protocol, at this point, we go to the diaphragm to know the answer. This is the right diaphragm. diaphragm. I will put my phaser ray probe here, subcostal anterior axillary line, and I will use the liver as a good window to reach the diaphragm. As you see here, our patient is tachypneic, but rapid shallow breathing, diaphragm movement is not good. Let us measure by MMOD. I will fire the MMOD here to see the movement of the diaphragm. It is less than one centimeter. Rapid, shallow, limited movement of the right diaphragm. What about left diaphragm? I use spleen as a window and I will get the left cobula here. Rapid, shallow breathing, limited movement of the left cobula. Let us measure by MMOD nothing moving in the left side so this patient is dyspneic hypoxic tachypneic rapid shallow breathing with normal heart normal lung 
but very limited move to the diaphragm. For me, at this point, I get the explanation for the hypoxia and the dyspnea for this patient. But what's causing this limited move to the diaphragm? What is causing this limited move to the diaphragm in this patient? Thanks to our beauty ultrasound machine. Let us see. This is the spleen of our patient a couple of days after sequestration crisis. You see here, bad subcapsular infarction. This is a splenic tissue and this is an infarcted tissue. Let us compare between this spleen and the image a couple of days back. You see here, homogeneous enlargement of the spleen and this is an infarcted spleen. Could we confirm this subcapsular infarction? Yes. Color Doppler, very subtle blood flow to the spleen. And CT with contrast reveal this tissue of the spleen taking the dye. And there is huge subcapsular area not taking the dye due to subcapsular infarction. You see here, coronal view, subcapsular infarction of the spleen. Really amazing young secular girl getting respiratory trouble after sequestration crisis due to subcapsular splenic infarction leading to limited limitation of diaphragmatic movement due to pain. Really, I have never heard of that as a cause of dyspnea. I know all of you know about the sequestration crisis and the autosplenectomy, but today you saw this process real, in real life, not in books. Thank you a lot for your respectable and appreciated listening and see you again in another amazing case of critical care ultrasound case study. Bye-bye.